Hey, what is going on guys? So I'm so excited today to finally have the HG The Origin RX7802 Gundam. Finally, the Origin version of the Gundam in high grade form. The Master Grade is awesome and we've been long, long, long waiting for and anticipating this release, but finally we have it out here in the high grade, the Origin line, and it looks pretty much amazing. So first of all, the box art here looking fantastic. You got the Gundam front and center with the bazooka, the shoulder cannon, the alternative form of the beam rifle there strapped on his behind, and the regular beam rifle I think is gonna be in here as well, like with the Master Grade, I'm pretty sure that comes with both versions. And then we also have the iconic upside down shield here for the Origin version of the Gundam. So it looks really great, it looks very highly detailed, and it's gonna have some cool markings and everything on there, just like we've come to expect from the HD The Origin line. So can't wait to check this out. As always guys, if you wanna check the kit out for yourself or anything else, check the link down in the video description to USA Gundam store and use my coupon code there, Zacharelius10, to save 10% off everything there on the store. So this is number 26 in the line. It took them all the way to 26 to finally come out with this. And I'm not sure how many more they're going to come out with. This may be one of the last HG The Origin kits because they've certainly slowed down quite a lot. It's been a while since the last one. So I don't know what else they might still yet come out with in the line. Hopefully they still do a few more because I really like them, but we'll have to see. Here on the bottom of the box, we just got a front and back view of what this kit is going to look like when it's all painted up. We've got both versions that you can make with this, either the middle early type or the middle type. There are so slightly different parts for the arms, slightly different shoulder parts, and also slightly different parts for the top of the chest as well. So it's still some very small differences between the two forms, but it's still cool that you can make two different versions of this. So you may want to make you buy two of this kit with all the different options, parts, and things that you have. So let me just have a little bit about the RX-7802 here and Amuro Ray, of course, over here about Gundam the Origin, Gundam Rising. So it's more information there in Japanese and in English. Around on the other side of the box, we've got some cool action poses showing the hyper bazooka, the shoulder cannon, the beam rifle middle type, and then we also have the beam rifle early type there. So both of those really cool. I love that early type beam rifle, definitely prefer that one. And then once again, just showing the differences between the shoulders there, the shoulder markings. We got a bunch of markings in here and then just some fantastic articulation. Again, pretty standard to the HD The Origin line. The articulation is usually pretty good. So certainly expecting no less here. Right off the bat, we can see the typical Gundam colors and then our marking stickers as well as some foil stickers there, which looks like we've got a few. We'll take a closer look at all this stuff here in a moment. Let's skip down to the manual first. On the top half there, we just have the box art once again down here. Just again, photos of the kits and photos of the differences between the two types. We do have some text here in Japanese and English as well. And then the specs down here, if you want to check that out, just simple information. On the back side of the manual, we got just some more action shots and some information about the different weapons and things like that. Over here, the shield, the beam sabers, of course, it's got all the typical Gundam weapons. Down here, the marking guide, as you can see, there's plenty of markings to go around on this kit, so you'll have all of those to put on. And then down below that, we also have the color guide there as well. Again, pretty typical Gundam colors in this case. Inside, we do have our parts list here, and as far as I know, this should be all new parts for this, except for maybe it looks like the B and C runners, maybe those are gonna be reused from one of the other different Gundam type origin kits, possibly, we'll have to see. And then it's just straight on into the construction. So you have, you're going through the building of the body, the head, the waist, the arms, the legs, and then back around on our color pages here, finishing up the assembly and then onto the weapons, the beam rifle, the hyper bazooka, the shield, the beam saber, and then how to mount it onto an action base. So pretty standard stuff there. Let's get a look at the runners. All right, so here is that foil sticker sheet. And as you can see, it's got stickers there for the eyes, the head cameras front and back, the V on the crotch, a little camera sticker there probably for the beam rifle and other camera sticker for the other beam rifle. And then the gray circles all going over the joints, it looks like probably. And for our marking stickers, we have a couple of EFSF and white base larger logos there. Most of these just kind of generic, small little caution markings for this in red, white, and then a couple in gray. SB13 for our standard clear pink beam saver effect parts and PC001 for our polycaps here in gray. All right, so runner A, a big brand new four color runner here for this kit. We got a couple of blue parts down there on the bottom for the torso, some yellow across the top, white over on the side, and then red throughout the center. Runner B1 in a kind of very warm colored medium gray here for some joint parts, also some weapons parts. Then we do also have runner B2, which is gonna be a copy of this section of the runner there. Runner C in this case is not a brand new runner for this kit. This is from the HD144 scale Origin MS. So this was not used with uh, the original Gundam local type, I believe this came with the later 
uh, Gundam type mobile suits uh, and a few, couple of them being P Bandai kits but so a few new parts for this kit that are not completely new. Runner D1 some more parts here in white mostly armor but a couple of weapons parts there for the bazooka as well on D1 anyway. On D2 is a copy of all of the runner except for those bazooka parts. Runner E another brand new runner for this kit the parts for the backpack and the beam rifles there in gray. And then runner H once again not a new runner for this kit as we saw this out previously with the local type Gundam so you'll have that here in gray as well. So there's all the runners. Looks pretty standard to an origin uh, Gundam type mobile suit here if you've ever built any of those but once again the detail looks fantastic so I think once it's all built up it's gonna look really really nice so let me get it snapped up and we'll see how it looks. Alright, and so then here is how it's going to look when it's all built up. Now, for the time being, I've built this up as the early type version of this. We will also take a look later on at the normal type, the middle type as well. It's just a matter of swapping a couple parts there on the shoulders, the forearms, and the chest, basically. The backpack, we also just have to remove the gun off there. But I personally prefer this version because it's basically a um, HG version of the Master Grade, which is what I wanted to do with this kit. But if you did like the middle type version, you can also just change up the those couple parts so we'll take a look at that and as you can see I did put some of the stickers on there's a there was a bunch of marking stickers for this uh, and I put just a few just some on so you guys can at least just get an idea of how the sticker is gonna look the stickers on the white plastic are gonna look fine on any of the colored plastic though they're not going to look quite as nice as you're gonna be able to see the outline of the sticker quite prominently especially on the blue and red colors there but it was a pretty great build and the engineering is especially really fantastic for this. For an HG kit, I mean, it's really nicely put together and just the way that everything's designed. So let's go ahead and just take a look at the articulation first then. So first up, as for the seam lines on this kit, it really doesn't have anything. All these seam lines here, like on the top of the upper arm there, on the side of the arm here, all the seam lines are made up in a way to be panel lines. So they're all like kind of thicker made as panel lines, so you won't have any seam lines to fill on this kit at all, which should be pretty nice. So they'll be just around on all these little parts here. You do have a little bit of seam line like here on the cannon up there at the top, the barrel and this part there on the back. So you have a little bit of seam line around there. As for the stickers, the foil stickers anyway, we got one for the eyes there, for the camera at the top of the head and then at the back of the head there. But that piece for at least the front of the head, that has the chin, the eyes, and also the head camera all in solid red. But you also have just a foil red sticker to go over that if you want. But if you didn't want, that is just molded in red, at least the front head camera there. Also the little V there on the crotch is a little yellow sticker there. And all these little joint covers here on the elbows, the knees, and the ankles. Those are little gray stickers in there for those as well, unfortunately. But anyway, they look alright. As for the head articulation, we have a double joint that will allow the head to go all the way up to there, which is pretty nice. You do also have the safety flags here on the V-fin, of course. You can cut those and sand those down carefully. Be very careful, though, because this V-fin is quite small and thin. But again, the color separation of the Vulcans in the head being a separate piece in there as well will make them not only easier to paint, but it just looks really, really good in there also. So the shoulder joint that will be able to pull forward, swing forward like that, pull that poly cap out of there. And the whole section which holds the poly cap will move out as well so you can actually get really nice upward movement here also which is something that a lot of kits don't have. So you can get some really nice upward movement there at the arm. And the arm going to work pretty normally from there, just rotation at the top, a double joint at the elbow to give you a really nice full bend there and then the wrist just on a ball joint here. At the torso section you have a really nice back bend there as that whole part will bend backwards like that and then this whole part will also bend forwards like that for a really nice full bend. It looks a little bit strange from the back, but you get a full bend there also. You can also move that a little bit side to side as well, so that's nice. And then of course, rotation there also. Around here on the backpack, you'll notice these thruster bells are just on little ball joint uh, poly caps there, so you can move those around a little bit. The beam saber handle, uh, this whole section can be able to rotate a little bit as well as with the cannon on this side you have two points of articulation, one here, and this tends to pop out really easily, so just be a little bit careful with that. I'd maybe put a little glue or something on this peg just to tighten that up, so that when you plug that in there, it's a nice tight fit. But then you can also rotate the cannon there at the top as well, so a nice joint there for that. No stickers for the two little cameras here at the front and back of that cannon, though you could probably cut a little bit off the sticker sheet and place that in there if you wanted to. 
For the front skirts, you can clip those apart. Actually, they just twist apart really easily. You, you probably will separate them by accident uh, in just the midst of building the kit. Uh, they're made, they're joined, they're molded together, but they just come apart really super easily. They just kind of twist apart just like that. So those can move on their own, totally up out of the way. It won't be a problem at all. On the side skirts, those also will move up a little bit out of the way like that. The back skirt, once again, though, as normal for an HD kit, is just fixed in place. That doesn't move at all. Now, as for the hip, this whole hip joint will rotate forward like that, and then out to the side. You'll be able to bring the legs out really far out to the side there, and then with the ankle, uh, front skirt armor up, you can bring the leg up to about 90 degrees there, and then to bend the knee, you have a nice armor separation there of the knee, you have a full bend there, and some nice, even uh, some detail up in there inside the exposed knee joint there also, so very cool. Down here at the ankles, the ankle armor is just attached onto the front, not actually on the sides, but just attached here at the front of the kind of shin armor there, so that will kind of just kind of free flow there in place. The ankles will be able to move side to side really nicely, so you should be able to get a really nice wide stance out of this. And then forward, you have a nice little toe bend here as well, very nice for an HG kit. And then down to there, and then up underneath the feet, nice full detail there as well, so very nice all around. As for the hand options, obviously on here you can see we have the open, just kind of resting hands. These could be acting as like a rifle support hand as well, I suppose. But we do also have just the regular holding hands here for holding the beam saber handles and the trigger finger hands for holding the uh, beam rifles. Now, once again, we have two different types of beam rifle. We got the early type, which I really like. I prefer this one, it's so cool looking. I like this version of the beam rifle. You have this little tab on the side here, which will flip out and then you can plug that onto the back skirt. Also, the main camera will move side to side. That is a separate yellow piece in there for that. That's nice, this is a foil sticker here for the camera of that. And then we do have a secondary handle which will fold out of the side here like that for a two-handed grip. If you want it, as you can see, we have a little peg on the handle there that you can plug this into the hand nice and securely on either the left or the right side. So all very nice, looks very good. We do have a little bit of a seam line on this one as well, but again, for an HD weapon, that's pretty normal. And then the middle type beam rifle, which is pretty standard kind of Gundam beam rifle looking here, except that's a little bit different here towards the back end. Then of course you have the part here in the center as well where this will fold out so you can plug this onto the back skirt also. So once again, just as normal, the camera moves, the forward handle moves, and it's a pretty nice design. I really like this slightly different take on the Gundam's standard beam rifle. You also have the Gundam's Hyper Bazooka, which is very nice here. This one, also the forward handle will move forward and back like that. And you got a little tab on there for being able to plug this into the left or right hand as well. You have the connector piece for that, which I have just connected onto there. So this will plug onto the back skirt and then you just pop that onto there for plugging this onto the back skirt for storage. In this case, it's not a yellow piece, but a yellow sticker there for the camera for this one, unfortunately, but that camera will also move a little bit like that as well. Otherwise, again, really nice molding for this one. You do have a seam line down the middle of the white parts there. The end is one solid piece, but then the main body uh, is two halves, so you have a seam line going down the middle of this white part there. You got our two standard clear pink beam saber effect parts here, of course, and the shield, or the shield, depending on which type you're building this as, and for this one, the handle will move up and down this whole thing will just slide up and down on a track here. You have a lot of nice detail in there, of course it's just all molded in white, and so this handle will move a little bit up and down like that, and then this is a connection that will just plug onto the back of the arm. So you have some nice movement there as well, so this should plug onto the arm really nicely. Now, with the Master Grade, you could plug the beam rifles into the back of the shield, and then you've got these points here where it looks like maybe you can do that, but let's try it here. I've not, I don't think I've seen any of like the official information showing that you can do this or not, but you can plug that onto there. But as you can see, this handle is kind of getting in the way. Let's try with the other beam rifle, and this one maybe will work better. So if you wanted to have the beam rifle plugged onto the inside of the shield, looks like maybe that could work there. It's going to be sticking out and looking a bit weird, but at least it's not going to be in the way of anything. You should still be able to attach this onto the arm and have it holding onto the handle here with the beam rifle still in place. Now if you wanted to have the beam rifle actually like sticking out like it's shooting from inside the shield, I suppose you could do that in a way like where you remove this front handle and then plug this onto the arm and then have this attached onto here. So you would have it holding onto this handle instead of the shield handle. Again, I think you could omit that and then have it just holding onto the actual beam rifle handle and then have this plugged onto the arm and then have that like a shield gun combo there attached onto the arm like that. It could actually be pretty cool. So it looks like you should be able to do that anyway. And then of course we've got the option part. So for building the middle type shoulder armor, you'll have to replace this part here at the end. 
So there's what that is going to look like. Here's the middle type versus the early type. Again, it's, both are cool, but I just kind of prefer the look of the early type here like that. Just again, a 144, 144 scale version of the Master Grade, basically. Uh, but this one is also pretty cool. For the backpack, basically, you just remove this part here. Plug on this second Beam Saber handle here, looking just kind of like the normal RX-78 too. And that is how you make the backpack for the middle type. For the forearms, basically, you need to remove this little gray part in here. So I think it's better to just remove this whole part here at the front pull out that little gray bit there that goes back on like that and then this side you have to replace this part here so that both arms are matching like this but you don't have anything actually installed in there in this kind of part where it looks like you should have something in there and then the whole front of the chest also needs to be replaced with this bit now i guess before we do that i forgot about this little piece here the little Gatling gun there at the top of the shoulder armor. So this part here, you can remove, put a little gray piece there in between, and there you go, there's how that looks uh, for how that's supposed to be opened up, firing the Gatling gun there on the chest as well. So very cool. But anyway, you need to replace this whole front of the chest with this part here, which basically just doesn't have the two little holes on this side. You can see it's got the one larger hole and the two on this side. This one just has a little bit different detail. And then it doesn't have this bit here on the side of the chest. It just it's supposed to be just flat on the top of the chest there as well. But all right, so here it is in the full middle type form. And yeah, uh, unfortunately, swapping out the front of the chest is a bit of a chore. So I wouldn't recommend trying to do that very often. I would say, you know, choose whichever form you think you're going to want to go with and just build it up like that from the start. Because yeah, swapping out that chest means you pretty much had to totally disassemble the whole torso of it again, which wasn't the easiest thing to do. And some of the parts were very tight. But anyway, once it's built up, here's how it looks as just the middle type. I did also forget to mention to you guys that the connection piece on the inside of the shield, that gray part, can be taken out. You can swap it. You can switch that whole part around. So if you're going to make it like as the middle type here, the shield is right side up as normal. If you're making it as the early type, earlier version, then uh, the shield is upside down, of course. So you'll just switch that inside connection piece for that. We'll just flip upside down. But anyway, it looks cool. It looks very good for just a pretty standard version of the 1144 scale uh, RX-7A2 Gundam. Now, this is why I prefer it as the early type, because it looks a little bit more different from the standard Gundam. This one looks pretty close to just the typical RX-7802, less so much like the RX-7802. So let's take a look at a comparison here real quick first and then we'll change it back to the early type. So here's a quick comparison with the HGUC Revive RX-7802 Gundam and as you can see it's definitely going to be looking much cooler. As much as I love the Revive Gundam, this one version is very cool looking. Now the other thing you'll notice is the plastic color. Now with the Revive Gundam it has that slight tint of green to it to sort of recreate the old, old colors of the kits and they used to be kind of slightly tinted green for the white colors. Now with this kit though, it's molded into straight white though, which I actually kind of don't like. I wish that it was the same as with the Master Grade, where the Master Grade had that kind of uh, warm, kind of almost like off-white cream kind of color to the white. I like that color for the origin version of the Gundam, so I'm a little bit disappointed that this version of it was just in just straight up white. Also, the shield can be attached onto the backpack by just folding up the connector piece like that. It just plugs there onto the center of the backpack like that and works pretty well. Ah uh, yes, and one more thing that I forgot to mention which you'll see here is that there's that flap on the back of the leg, on the back of the calf there that opens up and there's another little thruster bell hidden up inside there. Very cool little detail that I just kind of forgot about because how often is it that an HG kit has a detail like that? It's not very often. And so that's another really cool detail added onto this. And just the color separation, I didn't really mention this either on the knee. Where it's unfortunate that we have the gray stickers for the sides of the joints, but on the knee there's some really nice part separation with the gray part of the vent there. And then there's a couple little bits of gray just like poking out through the armor there on the knee as well. So just overall, well, it does have a couple of stickers on it. I think the color separation on this is really quite nice. The articulation, the engineering of this kit, as you can see, I mean, posing the kit, it's it poses fantastically. It looks awesome. It looks great. I think even though it doesn't have all the fancy engineering that went into the G40, I think the posing on this kit is just as good as the G40. It may not be able to do some of the more very obscure poses that the G40 could do, but I think overall, I mean, you can get this into pretty much any pose that you'd want. It's going to look fantastic. Also, the lack of seam lines actually is a points for this kit that the G40 had a couple of seam lines on it that you had to remove. This kit doesn't have any real seam lines on it except for a couple on the weapons. Other than that, I mean, it doesn't really have any seam lines. That's good. 
And even though there are a couple of seam lines on those weapons, I think just the amount of weapons, the options that you get in here are quite nice. I mean, it's pretty typical as far as that you get the shield, the beam rifle, and beam sabers, but then the addition of the second beam rifle, and then bazooka. Bazooka is also sort of semi-standard, so a lot of HG kits do come with some sort of bazooka like that as well, sort of, but not always, or not necessarily, so I think just the amount of weapons that you get with this is great, and then the option parts, just the different option parts to make it either as the early type, or the middle type, or you can mix and match, I mean, there's no rule that you have to make it as one particular type, you, if you like the shoulder armor better of like the early type, but you like the chest armor of the middle type better, there's no reason that you can't mix and match that stuff, so I think the options that you get in here uh, do make for a really nice uh, set. So. Is this definitively the best version of the RX-78 II in 144 scale form? I gotta say, uh, probably yeah. It's, I think, uh, very detailed, similar to the RG, and I think just probably generally more stable, more options than the RG as well. It doesn't quite have the gimmick of the inner frame and everything like that, of course, but uh, it's definitely more detailed and I think equally as articulated, if not more articulated, than the Revive version and it also comes with a little bit more accessories than the Revive version, of course, as well. And the G40, I mean, the G40 is very expensive and hard to get, so that's points against it right away, but it's also a very odd, different design as well, so unless you really like that, then I'd say this is probably the best version of the RX-782 that we have in 144 scale form. Now, now, I know this is the origin version, it's the RX-7802, but, you yeah. You know what I mean. Anyway, so it's a great kit. Definitely check it out if you're interested. If you guys have any other further questions or comments about the kit, of course, feel free to share those down below. Uh, my only small complaint that I would make about this is that I wish the white plastic was in the off-white cream color plastic like the Master Grade, but aside from that, very satisfied with this kit and I'm very much looking forward to painting it up. So I'm going to be painting this up in the near future, so look forward to a work in progress video on that very soon. And until then, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.